What is thyroid eye disease? Hi, Dr. So Parker again. Welcome to Section 2, Video 3 of PESA Productions Thyroid Eye Disease 10 Part Series. As always, we strongly recommend that you watch this series at least once in the order in which it was attended. If you haven't already viewed the previous videos, you're encouraged to do so first. In Section 1 of this series, we talked about the thyroid gland and the complex control over thyroid hormone production. In the first two videos in this section, we reviewed autoimmune disorders in general and talked a little about Graves' and Hashimoto's diseases. Now we'll move on and try to explain what exactly is thyroid eye disease. There are a few three-letter acronyms that we need to understand. Although this may seem a little garbled and a little bit like alphabet soup, it's really quite simple and straightforward. The first acronym is THA, and this stands for Thyroid Hormone Abnormality. Quite simply, it means that one or more of the following hormones, TSH, T3, and or T4, are felt to be too high or too low in the bloodstream. In section one of this series, we reviewed these hormones at length. Note that this says nothing about whether the person shows signs or symptoms of hyper or hypothyroidism. THA is based solely on laboratory test results. Unfortunately, we have no terms for someone who feels hypo or hyperthyroid without any detectable blood test abnormalities, but probably we should. In other words, THA is used to describe any elevation or decrease in any T4, T3, or TSH levels in the blood for any reason. This could be due to any of a number of causes, such as normal physiologic changes as might occur in pregnancy or in severe stress, viral or bacterial infections, over or under use of medications which increase or decrease thyroid hormone levels, dietary influences, or nutritional status, or even autoimmune disorders. ATD stands for autoimmune thyroid disorder. This means that a person has at least one autoimmune antibody affecting thyroid hormone production. In previous videos, we discussed thyroid hormone production, conversion of thyroid hormone T4 to T3, and the TSH receptor. There are many steps in this process that can be and are interrupted by autoimmune antibodies. A growing number of autoimmune antibodies are suspected of being involved in ATD. There are recognized autoimmune antibodies against thyroglobulin, remember that's T4, thyroid peroxidase, the enzyme that assists in the production and metabolism of all the thyroid hormones, against T4, T3, TSH, and the TSH receptor, among many others. The three most common of these, thyroid peroxidase antibody, thyroglobulin antibody, and TSH receptor antibody, probably account for about 60 to 70 percent of people with ATD. And these blood tests are usually covered by insurance because the antibody tests are commercially available. However, the testing for many of the other antibodies is not commercially available and is thus generally viewed as quote, experimental by insurance companies, and thus not covered. Research suggests that many people with ATD actually have more than one autoimmune antibody targeting thyroid hormone production. For example, someone with autoimmune antibodies against the TSH receptor may have different kinds of stimulatory antibodies, or they may have both inhibitory and stimulatory autoimmune antibodies that bind to the TSH receptor, as we've already discussed in prior videos. If someone has one of the three commercially available autoimmune antibodies, the amount of antibody in the blood may vary over time, and at times of low level may be missed. Different labs may also use different techniques with different levels of sensitivity for measuring the levels of these autoimmune antibodies. Finally, even if someone has measurable amounts of these autoimmune antibodies in their blood, they may never show any signs or symptoms of thyroid dysfunction. So not everyone with ATD has THA. Take, for example, the person who has equal amounts of inhibitory and stimulatory antibodies binding to the TSH receptor. And not everyone with THA, or thyroid hormone abnormality, has ATD autoimmune antibodies. Take, for example, the person whose thyroid has been surgically removed for thyroid cancer. Their thyroid hormones are low, but they don't necessarily have autoimmune antibodies. 
Since measuring autoimmune antibody titers can be highly elusive, some people may have absolutely characteristic signs or symptoms of ATD, autoimmune thyroid disorder, without ever having blood test confirmation. The presence of at least one autoimmune antibody can be presumed based upon clinical findings alone. Again, for clarity, ATD is the presence of an autoimmune disorder where one of the target organs is the thyroid or thyroid hormone production process. But that does not necessarily mean that a thyroid hormone abnormality is seen. A diagnosis of ATD may be made by documentation of the presence of one or more autoimmune antibodies in the blood, or it may be based upon clinical signs and symptoms alone. TED is thyroid eye disease, which is the eye manifestations of ATD. By definition, everyone with TED has ATD but not everyone with ATD has TED. This is analogous to saying that everyone who has a shingles rash has at some time been infected by the chickenpox virus that causes shingles, but not everyone who has had chickenpox gets a shingles rash. Perhaps a Venn diagram will help with these concepts. Here the blue circle represents people who have THA a recognized abnormality in their thyroid hormone levels, either hyper or hypothyroid. The green circle represents people who have ATD, or autoimmune thyroid disorder. Most of the people with ATD also have a thyroid hormone abnormality, but not all. The red circle represents people with thyroid eye disease. All of the people with thyroid eye disease, or TED, also have autoimmune thyroid disorder, by definition but not all of them have a thyroid hormone abnormality. We've explained that thyroid eye disease, or TED, is the current popular term used by physicians and researchers to describe the eye findings in autoimmune thyroid disorders. However, thyroid eye disease remains a misnomer, a bad name, and we should understand the limitations of this name. First, Thyroid eye disease is not caused by the thyroid gland. If you take nothing else away from this entire video series, remember this point. The thyroid does not cause the eye problems. This is often confusing for both patients and healthcare providers alike, because the name and historical association seem to imply a direct relationship. However, the presence of eye disease findings and the degree of eye disease severity are independent of the thyroid status. It doesn't matter whether some, someone's thyroid level is high, low, or completely normal. And now this is a slight oversimplification, but more about that later. I like to explain the relationship between the thyroid and the eyes in autoimmune thyroid disorder by saying that it's like rheumatoid arthritis. First, like TED, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder. In some people, rheumatoid causes wrist or hand deformities and pain. In others, rheumatoid arthritis may cause foot or ankle pain. Some unfortunates with rheumatoid arthritis get both wrist and ankle pain. Not everyone gets both wrist and ankle pain. But if someone gets both, the wrist and ankle pains may occur even decades apart from one another. The wrist pain doesn't cause the ankle pain, and the ankle pain doesn't cause the wrist pain. The wrist and ankle pains are endpoints of the same disease, an autoimmune process caused by an autoimmune antibody attacking the joints independent of one another. Thyroid eye disease is somewhat similar. In autoimmune thyroid disorder, some people develop trouble with their eyes. Some may have trouble with their thyroid. Note that I've said some. Not everyone has trouble with their thyroid even though they have autoimmune antibodies. Some people have problems with both their eyes and their thyroid, and decades may separate the problems with the eyes and the thyroid. The eyes don't create the thyroid problem, and the thyroid doesn't cause an eye problem. Both the eye and the thyroid troubles are the result of autoimmune antibodies circulating throughout the body. Although we've said that thyroid disorders don't cause thyroid eye disease, there is clearly an association between the two. If this red bar represents all people with ATD or an autoimmune thyroid disorder, someone with ATD has an estimated 30% chance of developing thyroid eye disease at some time in their life. Conversely, 
someone who has clinical evidence of having thyroid eye disease, by definition, has a 100% chance of having ATD or autoimmune thyroid disorder, but only an 80% chance of developing THA or a measurable thyroid hormone abnormality with T4, T3, or TSH blood levels out of whack at some time. That leaves 20% of people with clinically obvious TED or thyroid eye disease who never show abnormal thyroid hormone blood levels. We say that these people have euthyroid thyroid eye disease. Euthyroid means normal thyroid. There's a disconnect between eye findings and thyroid levels and autoimmune thyroid antibody levels. In previous videos, we've already discussed how there is no direct correlation or connection between the presence or severity of thyroid eye disease and thyroid hormone blood levels, or even commercially available autoimmune antibodies directed against the thyroid system. At the time that thyroid eye disease, or TED, is diagnosed, people may have hyper, high, hypo, low, or even you normal thyroid hormone levels. If someone has both abnormal thyroid hormone levels, THA, and thyroid eye disease, TED, decades may separate these two findings. As we've said, about 20% of people who have thyroid eye disease, or TED, never show a thyroid hormone abnormality in their blood. Conversely, a person who is or has been hyper or hypothyroid has only about a 30% chance of developing thyroid eye disease. As we've suggested, the temporal presentation or timing of THA, thyroid hormone abnormalities, and TED can be very variable. Of those people who have both thyroid eye disease and THA, thyroid hormone abnormality, roughly 20% or one out of five are found to have TED and abnormal thyroid hormone blood levels at the same time. Roughly 60% or just over half will show TED and abnormal thyroid hormone blood levels within a year of one another. So if a person is diagnosed with either high or low thyroid based upon a blood test, and that person has at least a 30% chance of developing thyroid eye disease, with a 60% chance of doing so within the first year, that means that an abnormal T3, T4, or TSH blood test in a person has at least an 18% or almost one in five chance of developing thyroid eye disease within a year and might thus wish to have at least one eye examination within that period. Let's flip this around and look at it from the other side. What if someone is diagnosed with thyroid eye disease, but all their thyroid hormone blood levels are normal, so-called euthyroid at the time of diagnosis? 25% of people who are euthyroid at the time of thyroid eye disease diagnosis will develop THA, or a measurable thyroid hormone abnormality, within a year. 50% or half will show abnormal thyroid hormone blood levels within five years. And we've already said 80% will develop abnormal thyroid hormone blood levels at some point in their life. So someone who is diagnosed with thyroid eye disease but has normal thyroid hormone blood levels at the time of diagnosis should probably get thyroid hormone blood tests at least every six months, checking for high or low thyroid. But remember, in 20%, or one out of five people with thyroid eye disease, an abnormality in their thyroid hormone levels will never show up, and they will continue to carry the diagnosis of euthyroid thyroid eye disease. As we've said, there appear to be a multitude of different autoimmune antibodies causing these disorders, but only three are commercially available for blood testing. This accounts for only about 60 to 70 percent of recognized disease, and in fact, many people probably have more than one autoimmune antibody. So normal TSH, T3, T4 blood tests do not mean a person doesn't have thyroid eye disease. Conversely, abnormal blood tests don't necessarily mean that a person will get thyroid eye disease. A positive titer for one of the three commercially available autoimmune antibodies against the thyroid system makes a diagnosis of ATD, or autoimmune thyroid disorder, and can support a clinical diagnosis of thyroid eye disease if the diagnosis is in question. But a negative blood test for these antibodies really means nothing, because some 30 to 40 percent of people with obvious thyroid eye disease never have a measurable level of these commercially available autoimmune antibodies. 
If thyroid hormone levels don't impact thyroid eye disease, why bother testing for these hormone levels after a diagnosis of thyroid eye disease is made? The benefit of testing for TSH, T3, and T4 is to determine whether or not a person should consider current change in their thyroid hormone levels, not for their eyes, but for their overall health and well-being. Since we explained in section one of this video series how the thyroid hormones affect a large number of systems throughout our whole body. We've explained that thyroid eye disease is not caused by thyroid hormone abnormalities, and that as of today, blood tests are not readily available to detect all of the autoimmune antibodies causing the disorder. So there are absolutely no reliable tests to make or confirm the diagnosis. That means that the diagnosis of thyroid eye disease is made by clinical examination alone, by an experienced physician. Once someone knows and looks for the characteristic signs of thyroid eye disease, the diagnosis is usually easy. In section six of this video series, we will explain these characteristic signs. Let's take a little quiz. A diagnosis of thyroid eye disease requires A, an abnormality at some time in serum T3, T4, and or TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. B, the presence of TPO, thyroid peroxidase autoimmune antibody, TGAB, thyroglobulin autoimmune antibody, TSI, thyroid stimulating autoimmune antibody, and or TBII, thyroid binding inhibitory autoimmune immunoglobulin. C, either A or B, or both. D, neither. We'll give you a moment to decide. Hopefully the answer is easy and clear. If not, you may wish to go back and review this video. The answer is neither. No blood test makes the diagnosis. It is a clinical diagnosis alone. We've said that thyroid eye disease is a confusing name because it is not caused by the thyroid, but it is also a bad name because it is not just one disease. There is a multitude of thyroid hormone targeting autoimmune antibodies, more being identified all the time, and many appear to have different effects with different disease presentations, a problem that is far more complicated when we recognize that many people with autoimmune thyroid disorders actually probably have more than one autoimmune antibody. The essential points of this video are, one, that ATD, autoimmune thyroid disorders, THA, thyroid hormone abnormality, and TED, thyroid eye disease, are different entities, but related. Try not to get confused as many people, patients and physicians alike do, and think that these are all the same. Two, people with thyroid eye disease may have high, low, or normal thyroid hormone blood tests, not only at the time of diagnosis, but throughout their entire lives. Three, the diagnosis of thyroid eye disease is made by clinical examination alone. Blood tests and imaging studies may help to confirm the diagnosis, but in the end, examination by an experienced examiner will always be most important.